long enough to span small rivers by itself, the beast, a semi-recumbent tandem, takes on the 2009 Portland Bridge Fiddle. Bridge pedal is offered in three different versions, the 11 bridge, 8 bridge, and 6 bridge versions. Due to my inattention to detail, we fell in with the 8 bridge ride. So what you see here is will be a hybrid of the 11 bridge and 8 bridge routes. The first bridge we'll cross is a Hoffman bridge, built in 1910. This 100-year-old bridge is now the bicycle freeway for east side commuters coming downtown. When the bridge was originally built, it had a wooden deck which has been ultimately replaced by a metal graded deck. For the bridge pedal, a temporary but noisy wooden deck is reinstalled. At this point in the ride, things, to be, things tend to be very crowded and very slow, so be patient, be aware, enjoy the view. In the distance there is the Markham Bridge, which we'll be going over. We pass the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry as we head towards the entrance to the Ross Island Bridge. Most of the beauty of the Ross Island Bridge, which was built in 1926, is on the bottom side. From the top, the bridge deck is rather spartan. You have to pay close attention as you go over this bridge. A lot of people stop to admire the view and then jump back into bicycle traffic without paying much attention. You've got riders going up the slope of the bridge at very varying speeds and then you have oncoming traffic coming at about 50 miles an hour towards you. The wide sidewalk and nice view make this a great bridge to ride over any time of the year. But be aware that the west end of the bridge is not bicycle friendly and has a hazardous traffic patterns. As we start our descent off the bridge in the distance is Pill Hill, the Oregon Health Science University complex and the Veterans Hospital. After leaving the Ross Island Bridge, there's a short stroll through the south part of downtown Portland as we approach the Markham Bridge. Much of this area is occupied by the Portland State University. Built in 1966, the Markham Bridge carries the I-5 freeway across the Willamette River. The bridge was an affront to the design sensibilities of Portlanders, at least the Portland Art Commission. I find it has a certain sinuous beauty as it snakes its way across the Willamette River. We're actually approaching the bridge on the I-405 approach rather than the I-5 approach. The two freeways merge at the west end of the bridge. There's always 
a party at the top of the bridge with various booths and music. Lots of people stopping to enjoy the view, take pictures. So you've really got to pay attention because there'll be people stopping in front of you and people going different speeds. can be hazardous because you're going over these very large expansion joints. You've got people that aren't used to riding fast and certainly aren't used to riding in a pack. There's lots of distractions and consequently there are always some pretty massive pileups descending the Markham Bridge. That said, if you leave yourself a bit of room and Pay attention, the descent is really a lot of fun. It was at this point we joined the group we were supposed to be riding with, that is the 11 Bridge group. After leaving the Markham Bridge, we went our way through the close-in Southeast Portland Industrial Area before heading south along the Willamette River towards Selwood and the Selwood Bridge. Selwood is situated on the bluffs overlooking the east bank of the Willamette River. At the base of the bluffs is the Springwater Bicycle and Pedestrian Trail which follows the river and is a great place to ride. <music> 